Uh, well, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today uh, on this webinar about uh, your dealership's budget and, and getting it getting it uh, dialed in. Um, before we begin, we're using GoToWebinar for this particular uh, uh, live training session. And so on the right-hand side of your screen, you should see a GoToWebinar control panel with some gray bars. And you can click on those bars, and those little drop-downs uh, up here. One of the drop downs that we really want to be focusing on right now is questions. Okay, so uh, we're going to take as many questions as we can at the end of this webinar. Feel free to enter anything in there, and, and we'll get to it as we as we keep going. Um, this is going to be a fun one today. We have last year every year at DSES we have a Innovation Cup competition, which is kind of Shark Tank meets meets TechCrunch Disrupt, where we have five vendors come on and and present. Uh, innovative company uh, products that they're launching and and uh, one of the finalists last year was reunion marketing and so uh, we would we're really excited to have Dane and Dave with us um, a, a quick little background Dane um, he actually worked for the department a Department of Defense contractor for a while uh, but then he uh, moved to become a senior editor for a 33 store groups automotive marketing department which where where Dane and Dave and some of the, the, the crew from Reunion Marketing all met. Um, so he worked a bunch of different brands inside and outside of retail locations. Um, he later acquired a position at a national advertising agency and honed his copywriting and creative direction chops uh, before he and, and Dave and some of the guys uh, co-founded Reunion Marketing. And currently, Dane is channeling his inner Matt Foley uh, I believe currently he's going to be presenting at a band down by the river in between uh, Virginia and Ohio. Is that right? That is correct. <laughs> so he may he may be in and out, but I think we've got a good signal here. We also have Dave. Uh, Dave is the founder and CEO of Reunion Marketing. Um, he, uh, you know, the, the cool thing about these guys is they've only been around since 2015, but now they have over 50 marketing rock stars that continue to elevate the digital presence of more than 200 dealer partners. He's an Ohio University alum, um, and you know he went from there to, uh, he, uh, he was the marketing director of that same 33 store group we talked about earlier. And um, yeah, he, uh, he's, uh, when he's not marketing and, and, and driving that forward, he spends time with his kids and his wife, uh, cheers for the Ohio State and the Rangers, and uh, pretty competitive on any variety of games. So, um, without further ado, I'm going to turn the time over to you two. Uh, and uh, once again, uh, we have Dane and Dave. Go ahead. Thanks, Bart. As uh, Bart said, I I'm really excited about this topic because I literally am presenting this with Dave in a van down by the river. I'm located just in Withville or Whiteville. Virginia on my way back to Ohio I got delayed uh, you know I was making a move in the middle of a pandemic not my smartest move and uh, so I got a little caught up but here I am and uh, Dave uh, you know virtually it's uh, great to co-host with you again yeah yeah we're well, excited to, excited to talk about these things I mean uh, you know Bart kind of alluded to the fact that you know when we were uh, working together at that dealership group and we, we managed a 10 million dollar budget so there's a lot of lessons learned there about best practices you know we were we were part of the uh, the economic uh, dip in the Great Recession. So there's a lot of stuff that we can learn from that. And then, you know, working with you know hundreds of dealerships today, um, you know, a lot of a lot of lessons that we're excited to talk about today. Great. So let's uh, let's dive in. So Dave, here's our philosophy. You know, I, I remember from working at 33 Store Group, we we you know we really applied the data. We really dug into you know across that whole dealership group. You know, what is going on? What are the trends, search behaviors, on-site behaviors? What are, the, what are all the different elements happening? And then, you know, we, we learned that, this, you know, it's not just data, but it's also the importance of customer service. And feeling like we're not just a number. We're not just, you know, in a, in a, in a call waiting queue. We want to be able to talk to people themselves. And, I, you know, I was so excited when we first formed Reunion Marketing and our philosophy behind this because we really applied that to Reunion where now we use our entire national dealership network to have that data first approach and we took the lessons learned and mistakes other vendors made in, in, in their customer service from our experience on the dealership side and want to apply that to reunion and to us data first plus unrivaled, unrivaled customer service is what is a successful partnership and Dave you're the one that came up with that great quote below. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's it. And that's, the, you know, what, what we'd recommend looking at when you're looking at a budget, when you're looking at vendor partners, and when you're looking at people that you want to work with is, is this combination. So we like to, to start off this kind of topic uh, with that in mind. You know, we also wanted to, to bring back a little bit of perspective. I talked about the Great Recession. I think it's very important to consider right now as we're, as we're looking at, you know, so some pretty sharp drops in sales, you know, the last couple of months during COVID. Um, so we're looking back at, you know, the Great Recession, what are lessons learned? We saw some major dips, you know, the last five years, we've had over 17 million new cars uh, sold, but we, you know, we were just uh, about 10 and a half million during the worst year in 2009. And so one of the things that we like to, to, to think about when we're making budget recommendations or, you know, trying to stay ahead of the, uh, the, the competition is um, what are the different things that, that make up uh, budget recommendations. So we, you know, we look back at this at this time period, and the dealerships that that really won during the Great Recession are those that that didn't stop their marketing, uh, but they but they did build budgets that were a little bit more fine tuned. You know, a lot of dealerships during this time they stopped their marketing. You saw consolidation happen at a greater rate than ever in history. A lot of you know dealerships that you know had one or two or three, uh, maybe even four stores within a group were get bought out by bigger dealership groups during this time. Uh, because market share uh, got lost by a lot of these dealerships who, who completely abandoned marketing. And so we've seen a few dealerships recently uh, just completely drop their marketing budget. And so, you know, when you look at paid search spends and other things, you see a lot of successful metrics for the dealerships that are still participating. There's less competition. Um, and, you know, what happens during that time period is that the dealerships who who increase their market share and increase their allocation because of it end up benefiting for the next several years because uh, allocation for so many different manufacturers is tied to that market share. And you know, right now, as there's inventory concerns and some of those different pieces too, it makes it that much more important to be winning uh, against the competition. And this is uh, a time where where market share and beating the, the dealership down the down the street, even in this competitive industry we live in is more important than ever because it's going to have an impact not just now not just the next few months but for years to come uh, and, and you know i think another good thing uh, in terms of thinking about building a budget and, and perspective that's important is also what what goes on with used cars because you know we, we you know in this last slide we saw new cars take a huge dip but you look at used cars uh you know they don't take as big of a hit during during uh you know some of these kind of time periods and, and the you know the ups and downs and, and when we hit um dips in the economy so keeping keeping used car a top of mind focus you know what not just having a new car strategy which a lot of dealerships when they're building a budget you know keep new cars their primary focus but there's a lot of great ways to get your used car inventory out there in front of people we're going to be talking about today don't forget fixed stops either uh you know fixed stops is is half of the 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 gross margin of the dealership but it gets according to a cox study that just happened i mean there's the dealership penetration into that area is only 33% across the industry. So, you know, keeping uh, when we're building a budget, not just new car sales in, in mind and top of mind, but also used cars and fixed stops is, is very important. And that that's sort of the crux of the of the the whole uh, sort of context here, isn't it? It's that you know we did a KPI cafe where we called it you know COVID-19 might be novel, but recessions aren't. So we're going to apply some of these. Uh, lessons learned. And, and like Dave said, you know, we want to focus on a holistic strategy. I mean, it's more important than ever to make sure you have a nice balance among your, your variable and fixed operations in your dealership. Exactly, exactly. And then, you know, so for, for, for additional perspective, you know, when we're, when we're, we're shaping a, a dealership's budget or, or making recommendations, perspective is everything. And Dane you know, talked about it earlier that, you know, that data backed uh, foundation along with the, the Unravel customer service, that's what creates a successful partnership. So a little bit more perspective here to go along with the fact that, you know, market share means more than ever, that what the decisions we're making now uh, are going to have an impact uh, for the next several months and years, you know, in terms of allocation and all those kind of things, you know, especially during during dips like this. Uh, but also um, for uh, the last five years, 17 million new new units sold. You know, one of uh, one of those years was the uh, the highest ever. That you know is, is something to celebrate. But when we look at the overall population for the United States, uh, that's that's only 5.2% of the population bought bought a new car last year. 
And so if you take that out by every given month, then we're looking at really less than half of a percent every given, in any given month is buying a new car. So, you know, when we're building out budgets, a lot of times a trap that, that people fall into is trying to spend so much money that you're hitting 100% of the population and you're, and you're hitting everyone inside the market. But uh, really any given month, less like, not, you know, 1.5% is buying a new or used car less than half a percent of us buying a, a, a new car. So targeting and focusing your dollars towards those people and having a greater frequency and more influence among those people is that much more important. Yeah, so, you know, it's important also to have the, the context of, you know, we're gonna be talking about digital strategies and that's important because over the past few years, dealers have been investing more and more and more in what NAD likes to call the internet. So it's all those different strategies you're implementing, you know, your website conversion, your SEO, your local SEO technical, your paid search, you know, you're going programmatic, all these dollars being invested. We're going to talk about some strategies today and lay out a budget for the a hypothetical budget for those strategies and kind of talk about some best practices so you get the most, you maximize the potency of every dollar you invest. Yeah, and it's it's kind of funny too. I and mean, when we say internet, internet means so many things, right? I mean, the website goes into that, and social media, and paid search, and SEO, and, and all the third-party sites, and all those different pieces. It's it's interesting perspective when we look at how dealers are spending money uh, compared to you know 2016. Even it was 33% was going into the internet, right? And that that uh, more targeted approach and being able or the the ability to target that much better on the internet you know the budgets are moving in the right direction across the industry in terms of where we're spending money uh, but the efficiency and the effectiveness is still so high we're spending as an industry you know 630 dollars approximately uh, marketing cost per car sold uh, and that that number is just way too high uh, so you know we talk about you know, uh, the expectations we had for that 33 store group, you know, and we, you know, we had a $10 million marketing budget, but our, our marketing uh, cost per car sold goals were around $200. And, and most dealerships really should live in that, that area, 200 to $300, depending on, um, you know, domestics or, or luxury or, or different types of dealership group. But as an industry, we are grossly overspending. And, and as we watch, you know, from 2010 to now, we've seen gross margins, uh, uh, decreased from four and a half percent back in 2010 of uh, you know the the average price of a new car down to around two percent right now. It's been heavily um, uh, dipping down, and so one of the the easiest areas to fix that is I mean the marketing cost is a, is a, a high percentage of of that margin. So if as an industry if we could move from 630 dollars and get down closer to that 200 300 dollar mark, we're talking about major savings, and so that's a lot of, of the mindset we want to have going into this. <coughs> yeah, and you know, as you know, as we come out of COVID, of course, a lot of people had COVID-19 messaging examples. You know, I mean that that's really kind of kind of speaking to actually really just the, the update and what uh, consumer expectations are, are heading, you know, with a pickup and delivery services and you know service scheduling and at home test drive. So you know having that messaging, letting people know that you know we always talk about reunion with with our with our digital marketing strategies to be found where demand exists well it's also to communicate the 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 demand that consumers have of of your dealership and and that that just that doesn't apply just to automotive retail that applies to all types of sorts of businesses so of course you can take a look at some of these uh, examples of this messaging and i'm sure that this type of stuff is going to continue on even as we get beyond the pandemic you know people's behaviors uh changing with the times Exactly. And, and, you know, the majority and bulk of this presentation is going to be building a budget based on a math equation and and matching the folks who are looking to buy with your dealership. But I think one of the most important things right now to keep uh, top of mind across every area where you're spending money is that, you know, people are, you know, people are scared or people are um, are not used to, to the, the changing landscape. And there's a lot of things that have dramatically shifted particularly with digital retailing. And that's been a topic conversation that we've seen a lot and at driving sales and in a lot of these different forums. Um, you know, even at reunion marketing, about about 10% of the dealerships that we work with uh, were using digital retailing before COVID. And now it's closer to 60%. And most projections across the industry are, you know, between eight and nine out of 10 dealers are, are going to be doing that. So I mean, people are are changing the way in which they're buying cars right now. The industry is shifting dramatically. So one of the most important things 
uh, for that and the in dealership experience and all the other things offering is just make sure that that messaging is loud and clear and, and obvious to, to people who are maybe not used to this environment because it is a very different environment. So just keeping that top of mind is, is such a valuable and important thing. Uh, and, and that goes, that, that's true for with, with lots of different areas of conversion and things on a website. You really want to tell people exactly what to do, especially when it comes to digital marketing, because if you tell them what to do, the odds are they're going to do that. Uh, so, so something that we want to keep top of mind is, as we build our budget. Yeah, and of course, as you can see with this uh, sort of uh, scale here, we're starting, we're, we're going to build a budget starting with intent. We want to go after those buyers that are raising their hands saying, hey, it's me, I'm ready to buy, here's what I'm looking for. And then, and then from intent, we're going to then build out this stimulus. So, of course, we're going to start with one of the most fundamental pieces. I like to call it the land of no competitors. Dave likes to call it where you're the sole influencer. Of course, the website. So, building up, we're going to focus on some of these intent pieces first. Your website, SEO and SEM, third-party sites, and social media. And then after that, Dave and I are going to kind of pivot to some of those stimulus channels, programmatic, which, of course, social media still falls into that. It's sort of a sort of a segue between the two. And we're going to kind of give you some, like I said, some budgeting, hypothetical budgeting based on the formula, as well as some best practices and strategies you can apply for each of them. Yeah, we, we said it to, to start the presentation, but, again, keeping top of mind that 0.5% of the population is buying a new car every month. Uh, which is such a small percentage uh, overall of the population, but there's a lot of people in there. And, and that's where the battleground starts, really focusing on doing everything we can to, to dominate at the intent level first. And, you know, we, we look at dealership websites and those kind of things uh, where you're, you're getting thousands of people to your, your website every single month. But, I mean, it's certainly not that many people coming to, uh, to, to the dealership. And so what are the different ways that we can attack that to, to get the most bang for our buck. All these different efforts are, are driving people to the website, driving people to you Google My Business page and other areas you know, with, that are closer to consideration. So very important to, to be considering intent first at the very bottom of the funnel, ready to buy a car. What are the, what are the last levers or, or most important levers we can pull to make that happen? And so with that said, I mean, the, the basic formula to get to, to launch uh, your, 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 your budget, are these two things. You know, we, we talked about marketing cost per car sold goals. Uh, we want to be in that 200 to $300 range. And then also, you know, how many units we're going to sell. And, and, and that, there's a little bit more unknown right now temporarily, but it's still something that we want to have. Um, you know, how many cars do we plan on selling? Multiply that by your marketing cost per car sold uh, goal. And then that's your budget. I mean, and that, that's, that's as simple as it is when you get started. But, you know, we're going to take that simple premise and um and then build out an example of of the type of thing that uh the, the type of methodology we look at when we're looking at building a budget you know from the the days of the dealership group to to now and, and beyond yeah and so here we are we're going to start with the website like we said where you're the sole influencer your competitors are not there and here is a hypothetical budget so hypothetically we're going to try to sell 150 units and we want to keep our marketing cost per car sold at 250 dollars giving us a budget of thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. again hypothetical budget now we're going to spend about four thousand dollars on website and conversion so we're going to be focusing on you know the elements of your website and and focusing on consumer behaviors on there to help compel conversion so this is where we're going to start and and again uh, to, to just reinforce the, the hypothetical if there's if there is a um a lot of in-market demand for some of these different budget items on the intent side you know we would recommend spending more money on the intent side so i mean the, any of these different uh, items that we're looking at it's not a set in stone four thousand dollars out of thirty seven thousand five hundred is, is what you have to spend just just the methodology behind is kind of what we're looking at here so um you know the the the, the, the first part you know we we talk about spending money and focusing on your website and and the conversion piece first because Again, there's thousands of people from all the different marketing efforts that, that we put together that are coming to the website. So many more folks are coming to the website than, than buy from the dealership. So what are the things we can do on you know, uh, one, of our, one of our websites to get people to the dealership, to get people to make a phone call, to get people to chat, to get people through uh, you know, the digital retailing process and, and that, that part that is changing so much? Uh, and so, so that's what this, this this entire aspect of the budget is about, you know, making sure you have uh, a strong chat provider and text provider. You know, really, at, at this point, 
uh, you know, not having digital retailing is something that is going to to be a differentiator for consumer and in the experience by the end of the year. I mean, so there's still some debate in the industry. And if you look at a lot of the forums and people talking about it, it's, it's changing so quickly. But, you know, just just like I mentioned earlier in the presentation, you know, we had about, you know, somewhere between five and 10 percent of, of the dealerships that, that uh, partner with Reunion on digital retailing before COVID to start the year. And now we're closer to 60 percent. And all of the expectations that, that we have and, and looking at, you know, expectations from, from Google and other other sources across the industry that are, you know, talking to dealerships and getting, giving surveys are that it's going to be somewhere between eight and nine dealerships out of 10 using digital retailing. Um, so, you know, the, the whole idea behind that and, and, you know, any of these different types of tools, you know, trade appraisal tools and, and all these different things is to just create that connection with, with the consumer, get people to interact with you at a dealership, get people to trust you, get them to engage with your vehicles, the cars and the stars, we always say. Uh, but we really want to get people, um, people shopping and buying from you and interacting with you. Now, well, one thing I do want to mention about the digital retailing that, that we're seeing across the industry as uh, something that, that is, is, uh, is hurting our ability to measure and benchmark or hurting dealerships' ability to, to monitor and benchmark, I should say, uh, is that a lot of the conversions that are happening from digital retailing are, uh, you know, either the digital retailing provider is not uh, sourcing them as a conversion or, you know, the paid search provider or, uh, you know, social media provider or whoever, they're, they're not properly measuring that and counting those as conversions. So, you know, when, when you look at measurement things like conversion rate or cost per conversion or the types of things that, uh, that you use to measure success, I mean, how often are we getting people uh, to, to, you know, uh, uh, reach out and talk to us at the dealership. A lot of those uh, leads and conversions <clears throat> are no are not being counted by your different providers. So, you know, one recommendation we have is to make sure that <clears throat> your provider is either working on that or aware of that because that has dramatically shifted a lot of, of uh, the results as more people are using digital retailing as one of these conversion tools. Uh, it, it's either the cost per lead is going significantly up. Uh, because those leads aren't counting, but it is is kind of a blind spot for a lot of dealerships. So something something that we'd want to, to keep in mind, and that's something that uh, here, Dave, I'm going to pass this back to you again here to to, to lead this one off because I'm getting getting excited again. <laughs> I know you. I like the enthusiasm and passion, Neil. You know, I mean, here's also just you know we talked about that 33 store group, and you know you kind of want to know where where you sit. So as we as we looked at all 33 stores, we see like performance metrics you know what what's going on so we we parlayed that into what we do now so when we when we look at these strategies and, and we think about things we you want to know where you stack up you want to know your home page to srp click through rate new srp to new vdp click through rate so on and so forth there's all these different metrics to to kind of understand where you are benchmark against the industry average just like we did with dealerships against the group at large so there's all these opportunities to learn and then guess what you can do you can prioritize and understand where you stack up. You can then prioritize your efforts on the website to get these things to start happening at a greater percentage for your dealership. And I think that's this is one of the most important things to consider across all the different budget items on, on your, um, your marketing plan uh, is making sure that we are properly measuring and assessing what's working and what's not. So... Um, you know, when you're looking at uh, your website providers and your conversion uh, rate optimization providers or, or some of these different tools that are available, um, you know, how, how well are you doing? You know, a lot of these different vendors and partners uh, in agencies, they know how well you're doing compared to everyone else. So, you know, we loved, you know, working for a 33, the, the, that 33 store group, comparing our results across all of our different dealerships. We love going to 20 groups and, and doing those same kind of things. How, how, are, how are we doing across these different channels? And so, you start looking at the most important piece, the website. Um, you know, how effective are you in getting people from the homepage to look at inventory? How effective are you uh, at you know creating phone calls or chats or digital retailing engagements and those kind of things? How many people are, sh are shopping for you? How does uh, how do all these different things stack up? And so one of the things that that we we recommend doing is just knowing you know every dealership has a website that that works differently, and there's areas that are working very effectively, and there are areas that are not working as well. So asking your providers and knowing top of mind, how do how do uh, my my SRPs, my search result pages perform? How, how do they compare with others? And just ask those kind of questions uh, to your different providers because a lot of times, you know, if you are, you know, in the um, 
you know, we use top 20 and then bottom 20% when people come into to, to this process for us, but we can pinpoint right away, hey, th these guys are not doing uh, as effective of a job as we know is possible on VDPs or on homepage efficiency, getting people to look at the used inventory or people are not getting to service pages, whatever, whatever that might be. Uh, an extra half a percentage point or one percentage point in conversion lift, we're talking about uh, major increases to leads and those kind of things, just, just knowing where we stack up because, again, thousands of people come to the website. Way more people come to the website than uh, come into the dealership. So you start breaking it out this way, it, it's, uh, it's why it's at the very bottom of, uh, of, our, of our funnel. It's at the very top of our budget planning process is really pinpointing because of there's the thousands of people that are coming there. Uh, where we have the biggest opportunity to increase our engagement and our eyeballs to the dealership and our crap bats and all those kind of things. Yeah, so moving on now, now we got the website set. We understand, you know, we're using those, those, those benchmarks to kind of prioritize and strategize for our website. Now we, now we want to drive, now that we have a website that can convert, we want to drive more and more people to the website, right? They reference the thousands of people coming to dealership sites. So in this hypothetical budget, not that you will definitively spend $2,000, but in this hypothetical, we're going to allocate about two thousand dollars of that thirty-seven thousand dollars five hundred budget towards SEO. Exactly, and uh, you know the the reason that we 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 like to focus on this as the very next piece is because this is you know the step up from uh, from the website where there's people that are in market that zero point five percent that are in market that are pretty much raising their hand and saying I want to buy a Ford F one fifty for sale in Dallas in this example. I want to buy a car. I'm looking for a dealership near me. And, and, and all that data is available to know, these are the exact queries that are happening in your market. You know, you can look at your, you know, your Google AdWords or, or uh, Search Console query reports, and you have a really good idea for what people are looking for. And so having a, a strong understanding of what it is that they're looking for, you can create an experience where you can, you can get many more people to come to your website by just creating that, that, that on-site experience that, that fulfills what it is they're looking for. You know, we, we talk about, um, uh, the, who the competitors are in the world of SEO and a lot of dealerships, you know, think about, you know, maybe the, the in this example, the Ford store down the street or maybe, you know, uh, a Chevy store or whatever. But really, you know, we're talking about SEO, the true competitors for a lot of these in-market searches are these third party websites. Look at this example here, uh, Ford F-150 for sale in Dallas, Texas. You get a Car Guru's result first, then Carfax, True Car, Auto Trader, Edmunds, Cars.com, CarMax. And then, uh, you know, the first dealership shows up. Uh, eight spots down the way and so ultimately what we want to do is is we want to as a dealership know what what people are searching for and create content on our website and an experience on our website that gives us the, the chance to show up in in some of those positions you know being a, a brick and mortar store being being the the business that can fulfill uh, the needs from these searches google does give preference to physical locations when you have the content to, to work for it so you know, we saw those examples of those third-party websites that are showing up there. The reason they do is because the, they have content pages on their website that match what those searches are. So having that as, you know, the cornerstone of your plan and making sure that, you know, you know for new cars and used cars and, you know, for all of your fixed ops um, uh, services that you offer and, and that are being searched for, just make sure that there's content on, on the site that fulfills that experience and then also keeping conversion in mind too, making sure that you make it easy for people to reach out and, and look at your inventory and shop and um, you know phone calls and chats and, and emails, form submissions, all those different kind of things, digital retailing. And uh, you know, this is this is one that we've talked about at length before, technical SEO element. Uh, it is so important, but I mean I'm not gonna talk about it too much today because it's um uh, it's not as exciting as some of the other stuff we're talking about, but when we are uh, doing technical SEO, making sure that we, uh, we, we, the people that are creating that content are, are incorporating these types of things on those pages, the right URL structures and meta tags and H1s and all the, all the, the elements of content that allows Google to know what it is, basically. And, and then the third pillar uh, of the SEO world and, and, and what's so important now is as Google My Business gets to be that much more of a uh, a visible featured uh, um, uh, digital asset for your dealership is making sure you're doing that right. You know, best practice now is have your your primary listing, but then also have a service page, just a Google My Business service page, a parts page. You know, we 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 know what people are searching for, right? We we talked about having all that data available to us, so 
having frequently asked questions about those types of things increases our visibility for discovery searches and those kind of good opportunities. Make sure we have all the photos, proper categories. I mean, Google My Business is one of the, the things that have changed the most over the last couple of years. So making sure that we are on top of all those different pieces and, and, and that's a cornerstone of the SEO world. Um, you know, we, we, we put in our example $2,000 as, as a, a monthly cost for SEO because, and, and that's a, a thing that ranges dramatically across the industry. Some people pay five or six or $800 for that too. But if you're doing it right and you're creating an experience that really is gonna, uh, gonna, gonna satisfy all these different areas and actually increase your in-market organic traffic and actually increase your leads, that's what you're, you're building this around, creating that experience that, that satisfies what people are searching for um, that, that's a ballparkish kind of kind of number. You know, like the expectation that we want to have is to show up on page page one for those make model searches, um, and, and so that's something that that making sure that we're comparing ourselves against Cars.com, against Car Gurus, against Auto Trader. That's the true competition, um, and, and those are the things that we want to keep top of mind there before jumping into our next spot on the budget, Dave. Yeah, so I mean, we, we we built our website. We understand search behavior on the site. We've invested in search engine optimization, so we're being found where demand exists. We're aligning our content with search intent. We're delivering on what what con where consumers are and what they need. And now we're gonna add another element to that to to still address more of that demand. And that, of course, is paid search. And in this hypothetical budget, we're gonna spend about seven thousand dollars. And so, you know, this is, again, this this is another one of those things that, that um, varies uh, really dramatically across each different market. So really keep in top of mind um, the fact that um, we want to be spending money on, on um, in market, raising your hand, I want to buy kind of kind of queries. And so if there's a lot of people in the market to buy, you probably want to increase your your um, your, your search budget, if there's not as many, then you're going to have to stimulate more interest. So, I mean, it's, it's a variable thing. And we'll talk about some of those metrics and, and how, to, um, how, how to decide, you know, how much we should be spending. But these are people that are, um, are raising their hand and saying that, you know, I want to buy a Porsche Macan right now or I want to lease a Porsche Macan. And so when, we're, when we're, we're looking at creating this kind of strategy and doing it the right way, a big part of that is also just like we said with SEO, uh, creating an experience that satisfies or matches the expectations of that person who's in the market raising their hand saying, hey, I'm looking to buy right now. I'm looking for a price right now. So, you, you know, with your your paid search provider, making sure that, you know, they are creating that experience that, that their, 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 uh, their ad copy matches those different searches. A Porsche Macan lease, uh, give them a different ad than a Porsche, you know, what, what's the price in a Porsche Macan or, or are there Porsche Macans in stock? Uh, because the more... Uh, that you can you can match those expectations of a different search then the higher the click through rate is going to be the more the more opportunity the more clicks you're going to get again we talk about market share and getting more eyeballs on your site and all those different pieces you know click through rate is such a, a big component of quality score which directly impacts how much you're spending per click too so you know the the, the more granular and compelling and and you know to the search your your ad copy is and all those you know, all those other relevant aspects of this uh the more you're uh, the more the, the greater share of voice you're going to get and that that's the thing is that too if dave if you go back a slide real quick sure. you know we talk about you know the content it being relevant to the consumer having that content on your website building out those pages look at those things that comprise quality score relevance 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 so building like dave said building out content it's not content is king it's relevance is king so speak to the individuals for what they need and not as individuals and not in big groups clusters make sure you're speaking to them as individual shoppers and then just like with uh <clears throat> excuse me just like with our uh main budget our paid search budget we're gonna build the budget up from ready to buy like dave keeps saying people that are raising their hand saying yes i want to buy people that have for lease uh for sale i mean there's all these all these different modifiers that people are indicating to you that yes they are ready to buy and you build that budget upward yeah it's, i think it's really important to keep to keep in mind that this is a very one-to-one -one kind of marketing channel so the higher up you go the further away from purchase a lot of these folks are there are significantly more cost effective ways to go after these folks we really wanted to be spending our money on the people that are raising their hand they're saying that they want to go somewhere they're they're in an audience that is in market ready to buy 
the higher up you go, and, and this is an area that I think uh, contributes to that very high, you know, $630 marketing cost per car sold average across the industry is that even though we are going to the internet and more targeted channels, a lot of times we're overspending on these channels. And, you know, we see a lot of dealerships with budgets uh, on the paid search side that are significantly higher than what they need to spend. And, and there's ways that, you know, as you, you're targeting folks that are much higher up in uh, or new to the buying process or, or whatever they're searching for that doesn't necessarily signify intense and ready to buy where those dollars could go much further with things we're going to talk about in the future. So, so the things that we like to look at are, you know, are they converting? Are they, uh, are they turning into a macro conversion, a phone call, a form fill, a chat, digital retailing, or are they shopping for inventory? You know, so conversion rate is a, is a big thing to look at. You know, we're not, you know, I think that's an industry we've moved, moved past cost per click being, uh, uh, you know, the, the end all be all metric that it was, you know, six or seven years ago for a lot of folks, but, you know, macro conversion rate, I think is one of the most important things to keep top of mind, but also as we're talking about uh, the competition and there being fewer, uh, you know, fewer cars being sold and the expectations for that, I think now we're, we're right around 12 and a half million, I think was the, one of the last projections I saw from JD Power last week, uh, down from, you know, the 17 million. So there's far, you know, far fewer cars in there. We want to have a greater share of of those in market clicks of those ready to buy clicks and so the click share is a metric that i that i strongly encourage everyone to start looking at um where uh basically if someone clicks on an ad what percentage of the time and again this is basically uh basically what it is if someone clicks on an ad what percentage of the time are they clicking on your ad uh because the more you, more in market clicks that are converting so making sure that we're top of mind there the greater share we have, the, the greater share of people who are, are going to be lead generators and, and get them to our website and be that sole influencer and all those kind of things. So uh, be looking at that metric. That's one that, that we strongly encourage uh, uh, to use. Yeah, and what better way to protect or grow your market share than by getting your click share, the share of consumers out there in your market actively seeking to purchase. Now, wait, hold on a second, Dave. I got to stop a second here. I thought, it says 500 right that's not a typo display 500 dollars. yeah i think uh you know this, this is one where we also see there's a lot of overspending that happens uh with with uh, uh display budgets and really you know banner blindness is a thing you know and that, that's a term that that you know one of our dealership partners uses and, and you know we, we've been using since uh, since hearing that uh where you know a lot of the the non-retargeting display ads you know drive people to a website and then they just immediately leave. They don't engage. I mean, just accidental clicks. And so we we, we recommend really uh, retargeting being the, the the primary focus of um, your display budget. Retarget, retarget only, and you know, retarget to the specific bin. If someone's looking at a specific car, show them that exact car and similar cars to it uh, for new and used. And and you know, someone someone goes to a service page on your website, show them that 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 service. Um, where the, the the average cost per thousand, you know, for retargeting is, you know, oftentimes like $2 or, you know, or less for every thousand ads. So you, you can really get a whole lot of budget out for this. The, the one thing that when we're looking at budgets that we do see, and then we want to warn dealers is that there's a lot of companies out there gouging on retargeting. There's a lot of um, uh, clicks that are happening out there that, that people are charging a dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars for every click for, for retargeting. And that is just, so much more money than it, they should be paying for that. So, you know, looking at your Google ads, you know, looking at your Facebook retargeting, looking at those things to see how much it actually costs, I think is a very important thing. You want to be working with a partner who's transparent showing that. That's uh, There's a big um, uh, overuse of, uh, of uh, spend there. Fantastic. Yeah, a lot of great insights there, accidental clicks, things like that, keeping that, you know, retargeting to the VIN for the win, you know, retargeting. Uh, the actual service so you know making sure that whatever brought them to the site you're retargeting them with and not just something sort of static and generic now we're moving on third-party websites so yes we still want to have a budget for dealerships with third-party websites consumers are there too so be found where demand exists there is demand on there and for this hypothetical budget we're going to allocate about seven thousand dollars yeah i think uh, you know one of the, the top of mind things here is that you know if you look at some of the the third party reports uh the same cars that, that are being seen on your website are are the the 
percentages that are being seen and looked at there. You know, usually 20% of the of your inventory makes up 80% of your total GDP views. So this is a debate, you know, across the industry. But when when we look at uh, how to measure uh, the cost effectiveness of these different channels, we are much more lead focused in in our mindset. You know, these are these are areas where this, I mean. VDPs are awesome, but but the same again. The breakdown of VDPs on your website it matches these almost identically. Uh, if you look at some of the the Lotlix, uh, reports, I mean, uh, so they're, they're uh, being optimizer tool, which is a pretty cool tool if anyone's uh, seen that. Um, that's where really we want to have people reach out and talk to us. Cost per lead is is the highest way in which we we rank these, but these are people that are in market ready to buy. Great, and now we're moving on. Now we we've addressed intent. We've got a lot. We we're addressing all those people that are saying, "Me, me, I'm ready to buy." They're raising their hands. They're saying and, and typing different things that indicate to us that tell us that they are ready to buy. Now we want to stimulate. Like Dave said, there's 0.5 percent in the market right now. Now we want to kind of stimulate interest. We want to we want to try to push more of that 99.5 percent into the market, and we're going to start with social media, focusing on Facebook because. It's a very cost-effective channel when done right, and we're going to allocate about four thousand dollars for that. It's a it's an, an interesting uh, uh, thing to consider. So you know, we talked about paid search being a very one-to-one -one, uh, channel. You know, sometimes you can you can have, you can spend seven dollars on a click and it'd be worth it. But you know, when we're thinking about trying to stimulate interest, I mean, seven dollars can can uh, be mean about a thousand ads that go out to, to folks across social channels. So, I mean, this is all about um, getting as much, uh, as many eyeballs as we can to move more people into that 0.5% to, to move a market. And dealerships can do that now if the strategy is built around that 0.5% or that 1.5% or it's really segmenting audiences. You know, there's some people are sedan buyers, some people are SUV buyers, some people are truck buyers. So, you know, th th there's so many different ways to, to go after different audiences, but if you can you know, have a, a heavier frequency or greater um, influence over a particular uh, audience with, with ads that are relevant to them. So just like SEO and content that's built around people to create an experience that is around, built around them and then your paid search ads, building copy that's around them. We wanna be giving people ads that speak to them, you know, and we see this outside of the auto industry all the time, right, Dan? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the strategy that we that we looked at. So, I mean, you look at other retailers. Now, we're not saying be Amazon or be this or be that. You're a car dealer, but there are takeaways from other uh, retail operations, major retail operations that can inform us and help us understand how to better create Facebook campaigns. And what we looked at was a lot of dealerships are running one, two, three, maybe up to six ads. And you look at other retailers, they're running dozens. 40, 50, 60 different ads speaking to people on an individual level. It's not, it's not even that they're hyper-targeting them. It's that they're creating such a wealth, such a breadth of variety of ads that they're touching on all the different types of shoppers they know that they have. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, if, if you are if you have one or two or three ads, you're putting a lot of your um, – uh, your dollars into just one, two or three ads, right? But, you know, an example I like to use, you know, say you're a Toyota store and you're going after a truck audience and you offer a new Tundra ad or new Tacoma ad or maybe used trucks or maybe all the trucks or maybe some that has, uh, you know, copy with price or without price. When you offer that variety, the, uh, the likelihood that one of those ads is going to resonate and speak to that individual and get them to engage with you and move them closer to end market where you can get them back to a retargeting schedule and those kind of things, that likelihood goes up so much. Uh, uh, it's so much more likely that, that they are going to um, engage with you. Uh, it, it, I, I'll show you some of the stats okay, behind that and how different that can look in a, in a second. But I mean, get them into that retargeting cycle, get them to your website where, you know, the cost per click to, to get them back. Uh, retargeting out on average is, you know, eight fifteen cents. Uh, this is one of the most cost-effective ways that you can spend your money in terms of stimulating interest, getting people back to the website, engaging with you. And, and we've seen from Experian and some of their studies that, you know, if someone comes to your website uh, three times, the just the likelihood that they're going to buy from you is so much higher than uh, if they're only there once. And so that's where when we compare social strategies on on you know, if you're running, I think this 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 top this is a the cohort analysis report in Google and Google Analytics. It's it's one of my favorite reports. But you know, we compare the people that 
um, are coming to the website from Facebook from a, uh, a, a campaign that has three or four ads versus one that has 40 ads at the bottom, the people that come back and re-engage with the website and, and repeat visit, uh, 6% in week one from the, the, the smaller, less robust one, down to 3% week two, two, you know, you can see by week five, 1.15%. But when you create a compelling, uh, robust social media strategy that has a variety of ads that add variety and, and inventory power and all those things, you can see just how many people are staying engaged and that, that your messaging is resonating with and that, you know, they are five weeks in still coming back to your website at the same rate as what uh, a, a less robust strategy does basically week one. Yeah, and just, you know, I hate to state the obvious, but also just real quick, Dave, we talk about, you know, you, you new cars and used cars. It's also true for fixed operations. People are, are looking for different types of service at different times. So, you know, looking at Facebook as a whole, this strategy, it's your ad variety plus tailored messaging, speaking to those people as uh, individuals, and then the actual inventory, actual service that's interesting now. Exactly, exactly. And, and again, you know, when you look at the setting expectations and measuring success, uh, Facebook is is one of, if not the most cost effective ways to drive that traffic. Right. I mean, you, you can see that the types of, of um, cost per click averages that that exist. I mean, it is a driver a website driver now. I mean, if you're doing it right with the ad variety, you're moving people into the market significantly cheaper as a, you know, in, in, in that metric than, than uh, some of those more one to one channels. But again, this is where you can get in front of, uh, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people for, for a significantly lower investment than in some of the other areas. Yeah, so now moving on, with more stimulus, we're going to talk a little bit about email and direct mail allocating $3,500 towards this type of service to stimulate interest and get people to come to the dealership, engage with your website, engage with you. Exactly. And then again, this is all about uh, audience segmentation too. So, you know, the gone are the days where we should be doing email or direct mail but with all one email blast to the entire database. So, I mean, our, our big, our big recommendation with this is, is to make sure that within your email strategy, within your direct mail strategy, you're using, um, uh, you know, equity mining or, or your service life cycle and, and, and making the, the message tailored that much more to the individual, just like the other things we talked about, there's an expectation with consumers now that we are creating an environment where our advertising really speaks on a, it feels like it speaks on a one-to-one -one basis. So segment your audience, you know, people that are Audi TT, Coupe, uh, it, it have those interests versus Audi A4 versus, uh, you know, an R8, it, you know, our people's lease is expiring. There are people in good equity positions, all these different things. We want, we want this channel for direct mail and email to be um, very one-to-one -one in, in and how we go about building that and, and the open rates and the engagement and, and the, the ROI is that much higher when we did uh, create that environment. Fantastic. And, you know, now we got, we're going to move on to programmatic OTT pre-roll. So now getting in more stimulus channels to stimulate interest and get, get people engaging with you in this hypothetical budget, $7,000 allocated towards these channels. Yeah. And with, the most exciting part about this is that, you know, all these different programmatic uh, channels, you know, your, your OTT uh, and uh, your video pre-roll and, I mean, you know, Facebook is, is, is programming, right, uh, is, is the ability to, to geographically and demographically target and not, not waste money. So, you know, to, to, to talk about how that works, let's, let's, let's throw traditional media in here and then compare these two in terms of, of spending dollars. Yeah, so here we are. I mean, traditional media, none, and that's because there's so many more cost efficient effective ways to attack stimulus to not just create this broad swath where you're hitting everyone who are outside of your demographics outside of your dma you can focus on the buyers who are fit within who your buyers are within your actual market for your dealership let's take a look at that breakdown dave yeah so you know well, why i get so excited about programmatic as a stimulus opportunity is um, you know, this this is uh, the Raleigh DMA we have reunion is located in, in Raleigh, you know, and, and fortunately, you know, work with partners all over the country. But, you know, this is a market that I know very well because uh, this is, you know, if I'm watching CBS, you know, in Wake County, uh, where, where we're located, I mean, it, we, we do uh, uh, traditional media spends maybe back in, in uh, when I was working on that dealership group uh, back with 
2007 or eight or, or whatever. Um, we're, we're buying an ad, but we're, that same ad is being seen across 23 different counties. So if I'm a, de a dealership within Wake County where 90% of my sales come from, uh, I'm still spending money for all of these, these uh, you know, 2.7 million people in that DMA. And with programmatic, uh, the, the ability to, to target both within audiences and a lot of those segmentation um, uh, abilities that exist nowadays that we talked about before, but geographically, there's, there's far less waste. So if I'm looking at cost per thousand, which is uh, one of the, the tools I look at when I'm creating a, uh, a buy on, on traditional media back in the day or, or you know, looking at for, for comparison purposes with programmatic, a $15 CPM with traditional media is not going to necessarily be apples to apples with programmatic now because there's a lot of people that are outside of our target market or outside of our target audience that are that I'm spending money on too. So, you know, if I was to, uh, you know, I'm not going to go through this entire this entire breakdown just with the, the time we have here, but you can see that, you know, the, the, the actual cost, you know, I, I like to look at it or, or think about it in a way that's different than just cost per thousand impressions. I like to think about what's my cost per per net target audience impressions because if, if I'm using a channel a traditional channel there's a lot of people that I'm spending money on that have zero percent interest or will never buy a car and so if we're talking about 0.5 percent of the market is buying a car any given month and we're trying to to get the people most likely to move into that channel I'm going to put more dollars and have a heavier frequency and more influence on a more targeted audience and not have nearly as much waste and you know, getting outside of the mindset as an industry that, that makes us overspend where we think that we're going to be able to get our ad in front of an entire market and move a market. If we start really focusing on the people that we can have the strongest influence over, our dollar goes so much further. We save so much more money. And really, ultimately, we're selling more cars during uh, using that kind of methodology because you can have a much heavier frequency. People see 10,000 ads every single month. And, you know, if you're, if you're doing a traditional media buy and trying to move a market and you're maybe have a frequency of like a three or four or five, what is, what's four ads going to do to out of 10,000 ads seen every month, especially if you're speaking to that audience? And that's what you want to underscore again, just it's cost per net target audience impressions that you really sort of want to look at. And then here's the thing, like Dave just said, 5,000, 10,000 ads per month. The difference is if you want to increase your frequency, so you how many times people are seeing your ads in traditional media. You have to spend more money, but with programmatic media, you just kind of have to tweak your targeting and, and find those little niches to to hyper, you know, more specific targeting to reach those specific audiences. No more money spent. All right, round us out, Dan. And then there's other, you know, community production. There's all sorts of other miscellaneous things you might be doing uh, for your community at your dealership to create collateral and do different things. So $2,500 remaining that you can invest in other things. Exactly. That's a, it's, that's a big part of the community. And right now, you know, we're seeing so many dealerships going above and beyond in, in the current environment. And it's, it's, it, it's a, it's, it's a very a proud, a proud industry to work in and be a part of. It's one of my, my favorite parts about the job is, you know, the, the competition uh, it, that the industry provides, but also just how much we give back as a community. So something that, that we always like having in, in, in our budget recommendations. Uh, Dane, why don't you, why don't you close us out here? All right. You know, here's here's the final thoughts. Shoppers are still looking for cars, even when they're forced at home during this pandemic. We see it historically with the Great Recession. You know, we, we, we see that people are still there. The demand is there and you want to be found. You don't want to abandon your strategy now when the people are still out there. And you know what? Even during the worst economic conditions, car sales continue and still sell above 60 percent of all time high total so not only are those people out there looking for cars they're still buying them and last for your marketing success set sales and marketing cost goals to set your budget and then build it from intent upwards yeah i think uh you know right now the decisions that that, that we're making or you know our dealerships are making or that you're making about your budget is is going to have an impact uh not just right now but with allocation and market share and, and those things that uh you know especially with with you know some concerns over or supply and, and then and that uh that's going to have an impact for for months or years to come and we we saw the dealerships who learned that lesson during the great recession and and really build their budget in in that roi focus that that lean approach but also um that approach where you know 
going after the competition was as top of mind as, as you can be. Those are the ones that came on the other side in a better situation and, and, and the ramifications can, can, can last a long time by doing it the right way. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, everyone, thanks for your time today. I don't see any questions in here yet, but please, we're here to answer your questions. If anyone has any, please uh, put them out there. And, and if not, thank you so much for spending your some of your time today with us. We are so incredibly grateful, even when we're in a van down by the river. <laughs> hey, Dave, thanks so much, Dave. That's This is brilliant. This is really good stuff. I, I do have a few questions. Um, uh, one, the, are the slides going to be made available? We had a couple people ask about that. We will send the slides out as well as a recording. This will be put on drivingsales.com as well as shared out in an email to anyone who attended the webinar. Uh, we've got a couple of those. Um, Keith wanted to know, uh, going back a little bit, what's the difference between a quality score and an optimization score? Yeah, so so Google's made some changes now uh, to to how they are making recommendations for uh, for, for for I mean having a, a robust and strong paid search strategy. So quality score is is really more of the you know the component that again that that equation is not necessarily correct uh, or 100% accurate because the bid price is is slightly greater, more heavily weighted. But bid price times quality score is pretty much what the position you're going to show up in. Uh, you know your opti scores is uh, you know how efficient are you in doing all the 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 smart bidding or or the the different uh, elements that Google's recommend recommending you do. So you can you can ask your your partner you know, your paid search provider um, you know what those scores are. You know again a dealership should have access to their Google Ads uh, to be able to see some of those things themselves. Um, but your provider can can give you that if you have a transparent provider. It's it's you know, there's elements of it that uh, I don't necessarily always agree with, honestly. Um, you know, it is, you know, Google's obviously a partner that we we love having and and, and we, uh, you know, we've really built a, a big part of our company around Google, right? But, you know, just like with, you know, TV stations and those kind of things, they are, you know, they're in it for the revenue too, right? I mean, they're, they're looking for the revenue. So some of the recommendations that, 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 are, that are included in that aspect, because it's a little bit less, um objective maybe at times uh uh just keep that keep that top of mind too because there are there are some uh optimization strategies that that work in different markets there's some uh bidding strategies that work differently so uh you know ultimately when when i'm looking at what's most important to me um you know I, I, the, those those things are very important and they're very telling but i think to me still it's ultimately conversion rate uh and uh, click share. You know, do, am I am I winning the market? Am I getting the highest percentage of the, my click share in the market, or um, it, for the the types of searches that are creating shopping behaviors on my website and giving me cracks of the bat and my 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 um, you know BDC team or or whoever more more lot traffic more more uh, car clicks and engagements there. Uh, perfect. Uh, real quick, where where do you in your experience uh, where do you two typically find dealerships have the most waste which one of those buckets that you that you kind of showed earlier um mm -hmm. uh do dealers waste the, the money on typically you know it, it used to be uh traditional media so a lot of dealerships are opening up to the idea that there's a ton of geographic and demographic you know audience waste through those i mean we still as an industry are spending you know significantly higher there than we can through some of those uh, more targeted programmatic channels, um, but I think you know outside of that one, which I think you know is, is looms large still for some dealerships and some markets uh, where we where they try to go after everyone. I think paid search is probably the next area where you know again it's a one to one channel, so you want to have the heavy ownership and paid search of the people that are in market ready to buy. You know, basically telling you I want to buy a car, but you know I said we see dealers that are that are spending twice as much money as they need to to still have a strong click share. Uh, because you know quality scores are, are too low, or they're going after things that are too broad, where people are so high up in the funnel that we can be redirecting those towards, uh, you know, some of those programmatic channels where you can hit thousands of people uh, for the cost of a single click and paid search. Perfect, uh, Dane. Have have fun on the road. Uh, good luck. Uh, be safe, Dave. <laughs> thank thank you. you so much for for being on this webinar. We 
we really appreciate you you coming on and sharing your insights. Yeah, we, we, it's always good talking to you, Bart. Looking forward to the next time and, and next time in person too, especially. I'm ready yeah, to be definitely. on the, the other side of this. <laughs> true, true. And and everyone who attended, thank you so much for attending this webinar. We really appreciate it, and we hope to see you all uh, on on future driving sales webinars.